happening and how it works out there in the world and how you're seen. And those in Jamaica who are practicing this music, before they leave Jamaica, they don't understand the expectations of the world. And so you leave and you come to Europe, and Europe has a, there's an expectation of what reggae music is supposed to be, because they have had this music and they have enjoyed it, and they become the quote-unquote purists, and as Bastian alluded to, if you stray too far from what they're used to, you're now outside of it and now your bookings become difficult. So it's almost as though innovation in the sense of creation is not encouraged. Because then you won't be that thing that, you know, we like when our reggae music artists dance and sing a particular way. That could go into a whole other discussion, which we might be a little distasteful in this, in this arena right now. But that's the fact of the matter. We have to be given that permission to do and to be and to express and to evolve because the world is expanding and evolving. And so Europe has to give us that room. I remember when I started to do music, I considered myself an innovation. My, my vibe was jazz on dub. And so I was injecting my influences of, of jazz and African music and world music, which is what I was exposed to even before reggae music. And I was infusing that with the instrumental dub and the roots reggae, which I got introduced to later, which is what really opened my heart to the potential of becoming an artist. And when I wanted to blend those two things, I faced resistance. I, faced, I still face resistance every time I push the envelope. And I have to wait until everything catches up to say, okay, now we accept it because more people are doing it. And that's a struggle that you face as an artist, especially in Jamaica where Again, the infrastructure and resources are limited, and so in order for you to do well, you have to fit into this box or you have to have an alternate source of resources so that you can do this work. And so these are some of the challenges that we will face in innovating. However, you can't stop it. You can't stop the innovation. And so you see a whole other set of youths coming up now who are they're infusing uh, hip-hop and trap and all of the other elements that, you know, we don't want to see the music tainted by. But again, remember, as Sonia pointed out, if the reggae musicians of old weren't listening to R&B and all these things, it wouldn't have been what you now see and love. So again, it is, what are you holding on to? Are you going to be the ones who are stopping innovation? Because innovation is going to happen. So there is the creative innovation and there is innovation of the artist themselves, the hybrid artist. And so I will keep mine as the shortest presentation so that we can have some questions. Because again, this, this panel here, we could have had a whole conference on just reggae innovation and the impact it has on the world. And so in closing, I would say that there is the space for innovation, there's the inevitability for innovation, but there also has to be an openness to the products of innovation in order for it to truly make the impact you know, in a, in a timely manner and in a successful way. Yes, so we all have a part to play in that. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I am going to take your applause as really the kind of spirit awakening and welcome that um, our words might have um, you know invited so thank you very much we have five minutes for questions oh my gosh if this clock is right so i see one hand in the back is that yes um, hello my name is uh, jeffrey i work for a reggae venue in berlin germany called yam um, you played there recently. Thank you for that. Um, I have two points uh, and one question. Um, um, first thing that we need to mention as well is that uh, sound, sound system culture became also the root of club culture as we know it in Western Europe right now and probably also in the, in the States. And there is a problem here because um, what we experience in Europe is that um, the club culture is not very I mean, it has evolved a lot in terms of awareness, in terms of um, tolerance and respect towards uh, gender um, diversity. And we experience big problems with homophobia and sexism coming from the reggae music. 
and the sound system culture. So one question would be like, how does the Jamaican seal, uh, scene deals with it? That would be very um, interesting for me to hear about like whether this is really a topic that is being talked about. Being on the table. And, and when I say complex, I mean the, the very conundrum that there is there is innovation. There there's a group of, of younger artists, even prior to the younger artists, a group of artists who have been trying to you know stop their own innovation in a in a world market. But then there are others who are expecting a particular kind of reggae product, which Jenna is spoke to. Um, but but let me see if I can tackle your question about how is homophobia being dealt with in Jamaica. Um, I know you must be aware of the entire movement uh, from the 2000s um, coming up where outrage and all of these um, things, the, the, the whole um, you know, movement against hate lyrics and so on, which impacted Jamaican artists quite a bit, a, a lot of ca canceled concerts. This is something I've documented in my own research, that in Jamaica, we, we have been dealing with it to the extent that the very contracts that sound system operators have to deal with, some of those you know, gigs that they do, they have to sign contracts about not using particular kinds of words, even our very own Jamaican curse words, um, or even spout paper. So it's something that's very much a, a, a level of awareness now in Jamaica that we, 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 have, we have been tackling. That doesn't mean that it's not happening still. But I would say that the amount of music being recorded now that is um, producing or um, espousing hate lyrics, much less than in the 1990s and the 2000s. Uh, I don't know if anybody else on the panel wants to. to, to yes, to, I definitely to, want to address. Um, <laughs> I want to address the, the, the latter points that you made regarding um, Jamaican music and it's the, the I want to address the role of the promoter. Yes, the incentive of a promoter here in Europe. Now there are many things that are you can possibly listen to. It's not like in Jamaica where this is the, all the music kind of falls into the same category. Here in Europe, um, what is the role of the promoter in advertising and getting the music out there on the radio and what is the infrastructure 